drafters, which is a few days away from the release of Strixhaven. And one of the important things to do, I think, before you join the draft format and, and or play Seal or something like that, is to know exactly what instant speed cards are in the format. And this is because you, if you can see your opponent's hold up mana for something, you want to know exactly what cards are available for them to hold up mana for. If they're attacking, what combat tricks can they have? Is there something which gives trample? Is there something which gives first strike? Is there something which pumps the whole team? And how much mana do those things cost? I'll be going through the blue cards first, then I'll be looking at counters, and then I'll be looking at Quandrix, and then green, and then Witherbloom, and then kind of go through the colleges in that way. I'll also be looking at the uh, the main set cards before I'll be looking at, for each colour, before I look at the um, Mystic Archive cards for that colour, and that's definitely not because I almost forgot to include them in the video. Um, so I'll be going through all these cards and we'll be able to talk about what each one is, how impactful it is, and how much you need to watch out for it, as well as kind of having a bit of an overview of each colour and the main things you should be worried about the opponent playing in that colour, because it doesn't always line up set to set. Starting off with blue, uh, first one's quite a big one actually I think, Resculpt, one in a blue, Exile target artifact or creature, its controller creates a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token. There's quite a lot of flexibility in this, we've seen similar cards over the last uh, couple of sets where they do a similar thing to this, uh, but this one lets you either take out an opponent's stuff, so if you're attacking into your opponent, and they could block, and they could use this on their creature, so it's going to die in combat, and they would get a 4-4 out of it. And then they could attack back with that 4-4 next turn, which could be something which could kill you. Another thing the opponent could do is when you're attacking, they could take out one of their small creatures, a 1-1, and they could replace it with this, 4-4, four, four, and then they've got a 4-4 four, four to block with, which you might not have accounted for in your attacks and your, your combat math. So I think it's a bit important one to think about here. A couple of the cards which um, don't quite affect the board. You've got Curate here, which uh, is a nice little card draw spell, but it doesn't do a huge amount. Uh, we've also got Pop Quiz, which is a the first of these Learn cards. So a little note about Learn is that it does get a card from outside the game. Yes, it can discard a card and draw a card, but it gets a card from outside the game. It's a specific one of these lesson cards, and all of the lessons are sorcery. So none of the lessons are instant, so we don't really need to worry about them at this point. They can't cast pop quiz or uh, or arcane subtraction, which we're going to look at in a second, and then go get an, another instant speed card. However, they could discard a card and draw an instant speed card, so that's something to watch out a little bit for. Arcane subtraction itself, seen effects similar to this before. Play about playable about half of sets that it's in. Target creature gets minus four, minus one until end of turn uh, for one in blue, but I think the learn's going to tip it over the edge in this one. Uh, you know, use a combat trick, you think that you're going to have a trade when you're attacking into it, your opponent casts this, uh, their creature survives and your creature dies. So it will happen from time to time, and I think the learn aspect of this, being able to get any of those lesson cards from your sideboard, is going to just tip it over the edge a little bit. Divide by zero is really a, um, a counter spell, but it's uh, it's... Not just counter spell, I probably should have included in the counter spell section, but there is quite a lot in there. Return target spell or permanent with mana value 1 to its owner's hand. Uh, mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand, and it's got learn. So you can counter a spell, or you can return a non land permanent effectively, that's what it's saying here, to its owner's hand. Uh, if you counter a spell, it goes to the hand as well, so it's just delaying it by a little bit, but it does have learn on there as well. Um, you've got burying books. Interesting little spell, this. I think it's effectively two different cards in one. It does cost 5 mana on the face, but it costs 2 less if it targets an attacking creature. So if you're attacking in, then you pay 3 mana to return an attacking creature to your hand. But if the opponent's going to crack back next turn, you've got a blocker, then they can pay the full 5 mana and they remove the blocker on their turn. Uh, they can also cast this in your end step and then still follow up with the spell on your turn. So uh, there's quite a lot of flexibility in this one. If you do see the opponent uh, seems to have an instant speed when you're attacking and then they don't have it at other times, it's probably going to be this one uh, if they don't have 5 mana open but they do have 3 mana open. So that's a little thing to watch out for if you're on Arena. Last one, Snow Day, 4 blue blue. Uh, tap to 2 target creatures, those creatures don't untap until the next controls next untap step. Draw 2 cards then discard a card. This is instant speed as well so I think it's a really unique uh, twist on the usual tap down a number of creatures spell for six mana that we've seen in a few uh, ways. Sometimes it's bounce a couple of things as well. You draw two cards and discard a card, and it happens in instant speed. So at the end of your turn, the opponent can cast this, tap down two of your things, still come up uh, with another card in hand for their next turn. So it's uh, it's going to be quite a big one, I think, this one. And they, you know they've drawn two cards and discard one card, so the chance of them drawing a land uh, and just being left with a land in hand is reduced. 
We only have one flash creature in the whole set. This is the Borog Befuddler, one in the blue for a 2 1 flash. And when it ends the battlefield, target creature opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until the end of turn. We saw a card like this do very well in Zendikar Rising with the Rogue's deck, but then we saw it not, not do very much in Kaldheim. So, uh, Borog Befuddler, I think it could see play. I think having two power is just going to tip it over the edge a little bit, but I could quite easily see a case where this doesn't actually see a huge amount of play. Looking at the Mystic Archive, there's nothing too much that affects the board here. We've got a couple of draw spells. Uh, Opt, Brainstorm and Blue Sun Zenith. Uh, Brainstorm is kind of a draw spell. Uh, you, you do have to put two cards back, so you do end up with a, with a different card in hand. But uh, the, there is some issues you've got to worry about when casting Brainstorm. Uh, Opt, seen loads of times before. Scry 1, draw a card, instant speed. Nice little card there to have. It's not really going to affect combat at all. And then Blue Sun Zenith as well. Uh, you can draw the opponent a lot of cards. It's something to be worried about if you've got a lot of mana open and you're not going to kill them in that attack. Uh, they could come back and just play a load of creatures next turn. So uh, that is something that you should probably be aware about. Moving on to the counter spells. There's a subset of the blue uh, spells, but we do have one special mention in here. Mana Tithe, single white, counter target spell, unless it's controller, pays one. And this is going to be a really important card uh, for white decks. I think something like a, a Silver Quill deck where they might not be playing blue. And... You know, they'll have black and white and they'll might keep the one white mana open. You will be able to see this sometimes when you pass on priority and if you're going to cast a spell, especially if you've got uh, mana open, and you cast a spell, it they have priority for whatever reason. It shows that they've got something to, to, to cast, but they don't cast uh, the spell. And it, that could be mana tithe. If you're tapping out, they're probably just going to counter whatever you're going to be tapping out for. It's going to catch people out, it's going to catch me out. Uh, sometimes you play be playing against the card. It is a rare, so you're not going to be uh, seeing it too often, which is going to make it even harder to kind of think about and remember when you're playing around it, but it will come up from time to time. Also from the Mystical Archive, we have Counter Spell. The OG costs blue, blue for Counter Target Spell, and that's all it says. It's really powerful, but to be honest, at Limited, if they've got two mana open, at least one of which is blue, you're going to be looking for a counter spell because if you look at all of these, you've got counter spell, negate, reject, test of talents, memory lapse, decisive denial, all for blue and potentially something else which are counter spells. So it's something that we should be aware of when you just see blue mana open. However, known the ways that you can play around these is going to be important. I think negate itself is going to be quite a key spell in drafts. I think it's going to be picked quite highly. There's a lot of instances of sorcery which have some big splashy effects. So negate is a way, to, a good way to counter those without needing to have actually both blue, blue, open. Reject is an interesting one as well. It's a little bit of a play on essence scatter. It's an uh, improvement, I think, pretty much, especially in limited. Counter target creature or planes water spell unless its controller pays three. If that spell is counter this way, exile instead of putting it into its controller's graveyard. And the reason why I think it's going to be just pretty much a strict upgrade to essence scatter is Pain 3, especially on a creature, is going to be quite a big chunk of mana. Uh, usually it's just going to say counter target creature or planes water spell. It also exiles, not there's a lot of graveyard recursion in this set, but it will be uh, important once or twice. And it also uh, hits planes water, so it will get some of those mythic planes waters, which will be popping up from time to time, which is a nice little bonus to it. And it's nice to see a little bit more planes water interaction in the sets these days. So I think reject's going to be a really, really good spell. Uh, the only thing which might bring it down is the fact that maybe fewer creatures are getting played because there's more of these instants and sources getting played. Moving on to memory lapse. Counter target spell. If that spells counter this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of in its play that player's graveyard. So you're negating an extra draw, they're getting this card back. Sometimes it might be uh, just delaying the inevitable if they've got a really bomb mythic or something like that, but other times it's just going to take the opportunity to play that card away and you're going to know it's going to be in their hand. Uh, test of talents. Not sure how playable this is going to be in limited. Uh, it probably will get played, but it's not going to be as good as it will be in Constructed. One in the blue, counter target, instant or sorcery spell, search its controller's graveyard, hand and library for any number of cards with the same name as this spell and exile them. That player shuffles and draws a card for each card exiled from the hand this way. It's still pretty much just a negate, which is, is quite nice. It doesn't hit enchantments and artifacts that aren't creatures, but it is uh, hitting instant and sorcery, so it will be played. Uh, but I think it's not going to have the same effect as it will in some constructed formats. However, just having a chance to look through the library is a decent amount of information so you can see uh, what they've got and what you can be looking out for in later turns. So that's, that's pretty uh, key, I think, to just know what they could be playing. Decisive Denial, modal spell here in Quandrix. It's a, a card that we'll be looking at a little bit later on as well. Green and a blue, choose one. Target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control. Or 
counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays three. So we've got a pays three uh, word in there again. I think that's going to be more or less important depending on which way around you're looking at it. If you're casting a spell and your opponent has green blue open, then if it's a non creature spell, you're a lot more likely to play a two mana spell on turn five when you have five mana open. That's a non creature spell that you want to resolve. So it could be removal, could be an eliminate or some other two mana black removal spell. And then have the mana to pay open, uh, open to uh, pay for it. Then you want to cast a creature spell. So if you cast on a two drop creature on turn five, it's not going to be making that big of an impact. But if you cast on a two mana removal spell on turn five, it could be making quite a big impact. So knowing that you can play around this a little bit, it's going to be a bit more important and it makes it that pay three more interesting than it did in reject. It also has the other opportunity to fight uh, a creature. So if you cast a creature spell, then they can get their big creature and they can fight your creature at instant speed, which can, again, mess with combat and things as well. So I think it's going to be a, a quite nice little card and a couple of very key modes on there as well. Another uh, Quandrix card is Quandrix Command. Three mana, mortal card, choose two. Uh, return target creature or planes what to its owner's hand. Counter target artifact or enchantment spell. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Or target player shuffles uh, up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. So some very varied options here. Uh, it does have counter on there as well. Uh, so counter target artifact and enchantment. Not going to be a huge amount of those going around. Again with the in increased focus on uh, instant and sorceries. Uh, I think that mode is going to be a little bit less useful than it would be in a normal set. But it's still going to be quite interesting. Uh, and it is something to be aware about. The last kind of spell we've got to talk about is Whirlwind Denial. It is a reprint from a standard set, an uncommon mystical archive. For each spell or ability your opponent's control, counter it unless its controller pays four. So at the very least, it's pretty much a cancel here. Uh, in, fact, in fact, it's a little bit easier to cast. Yes, it just says pay four instead of um, just outright ca uh, countering it, but chances are that's going to be a counter spell anyway. But one big thing where this does come into its own is if you're countering a storm stack. So if you've cast a few spells and then you're going to cast a big storm card, a grape shot or a tendrils of agony or something like that, Whirlwind of Denial can counter the whole pile, whereas a normal counter spell will only uh, counter the, the initial spell or one of the copies, but all the rest of the copies will resolve. So that's going to be a key card when battling against some storm decks. Looking at the rest of the Quandrix spells here, we've got Double Major, it's a rare spell. Uh, it's an interesting one. Copy target creature spell you control, except it isn't legendary if the spell is legendary. And the reason why this is interesting is that you can't just copy a creature that's on the battlefield. It's got to be a creature spell. So that's something to watch out for. And I think it's going to be quite useful. Say turn six, you have a four drop, you have this in hand. You'll be able to pull some shenanigans, but it's not an automatically playable card, I don't think. We've got two cards which are quite similar at the top here. Growth Spiral and Eureka Moon. Growth, growth Spiral is green and blue. Draw a card, then put a land from your hand on the battlefield. Eureka Moment 2, a green and a blue. Draw two cards, and you may put a land from your hand on the battlefield, so it's a little bit of a bigger growth spiral. Uh, a big point with these is, yes, they're not really affecting the board. You can get a land in, fair enough. But if the opponent's playing a three-color deck, so it could be like a Sultai deck, they could play Growth Spiral or Eureka Moment, draw play the black mana which you might not have had out before and then they've got access to a removal spell as well so that's something that could happen with these it's a bit of a rare case but it can happen it's something you should be aware of you also have square up one and then a green blue hybrid so green or blue target creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four until end of turn I think this is going to be a bit more important than you might look at first yes it's just making one of their creatures potentially into a 4-4 four, four, but there's a lot of plus one plus one counter stuff going on around the format and also these fractals which are base power zero zero normally with a load of counters on them this can make them effectively plus four plus four so if it attack with a one one fractal it can turn into a five five fractal which is something which you should be aware about moving on to the other side of quandrix to our second monocolor of the day uh we've got fortifying draft green and this is a really really sweet card i, I want to do a little bit of a video around some uh, little combos you can do and this is going to be a card which i want to do the combos around you gain two life Target creature gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is the amount of life you've gained this turn. So at a base, you gain two life, a creature gets plus two, plus two, at instant speed for a single green mana, which is great. But there are ways to gain a lot of life in a turn. Uh, there's some cards where you can get a load of the pests, and when the pests die, you gain a life. And then if you've got a way to repeatedly sack those pests, then this can gain you a lot, a lot, a lot of life, and then you can pump a creature quite a lot. So there's some definite shenanigans that can be brought out with this. If your opponent's gained a lot of life, be wary of this card. There's also Charge Through, which is 
uh, important card in this format because there's not a lot of things which have trample. There's a lot of big creatures, but not necessarily with trample. So giving a creature uh, trample until the end of turn is really important. Single green and a Dorsio card as well. So, uh, you know, even just fortify and draft and charge through it together. Green, green, plus two, plus two, and trample. Potentially a bit more than that as well. So they're two cards which I think are going to be a little bit more effective than you might think at first, especially charge through it might be a little bit undervalued at first, and I think it's going to be really relevant, specific in these green decks, the Quandrix and the Witherbloom, because both of those do have some quite big creatures for cheap costs with Trample. We have Tangle Trap, and this is a cool card. It's uh, another uh, card which has a couple of modes, and choose one. Tangle Trap deals five damage to target creature or flying, or destroy target artifact. Possibly less important than it has been in, in previous sets. Uh, this this kind of effect, again, there's fewer artifacts around, but it will be useful from time to time. Definite sideboard card that I would be playing, but if you're playing best of one, probably wouldn't expect us to see this a huge amount. And then the last mono green card we've got that isn't the Mystical Archive is Big Play. One on a green, target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains reach until end of turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So effectively, plus three, plus three until end of turn, and so, uh, one of that sticks around and also gets reach. So you can cast it on your... Uh, creature that's blocking as a defensive spell if you're attacking with a flyer they could have this make that creature flying it'll still get a plus one plus one overall so there's a few shenanigans that can happen with this and it's a really interesting format of a spell not something that we see very often that it gets a counter and then it gets another buff on top of that temporarily looking at the rest of the green cards we've got snakeskin veil it's important to worry about this one because it gives hexproof so single green put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control it gains hexproof until end of turn just sort in cal time and it uh, blanks a lot of the removal spells as well as making the creatures a little bit more powerful. Weather the Storm, good anti-storm card. Uh, so if the opponent's storming off, and then, uh, or if you're storming off, the, the opponent could have this for one and a green, uh, and then they can just gain three life for all of your storm uh, spells. So that is something to, uh, to worry about. But also, if you know you've cast a couple of spells, then they can cast this and get nine life. And if you're going to be attacking through with a couple of combat tricks, uh, that could be quite a big swing in the opponent's favour. So Weather of Storm is quite an a important card that you're going to have to be wary about, I think, especially if you've already seen it once. And then the last one, Cross and Grip, it's effectively just three mana, destroy target artifact or enchantment, but it does a split second, which means it can't be countered and it can't really be responded to in any meaningful way. So there is that as well. Moving on to the Witherbloom College. And we've got Tender Pests to start with. So this is one of those cards I was talking about earlier that you can play it again to get a lot of pests. And if you stack a lot of pests, you can gain a lot of life. And uh, yes, it's instant speed. It's quite a good one if you're blocking or if you're going to be uh, removing one of their creatures. Then they could cast this and get a load of 1-1s. One if uh, you know, you're know you attacking into their, their stuff and they've got a big blocker that they have there, they could then cast this and just get a whole board full of 1-1s. One so even if you left uh, one blocker open to block any big creature that they might play, then... You know they could just have six or seven one ones instead, so that that that's uh, something that I would be a little bit worried about. It'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Also got Metallic Spear, two black green, it costs two less to cast if you gain life during your turn, and we've already seen there's plenty of ways to gain life. But just at, even at four mana, destroy target non land permanent is a really good effect. We've got Rush Revert Rebirth. Uh, in fact, I've seen similar versions of before, but not usually in a ghoul spell. Choose target creature. When that creature dies this turn, search your library for a creature card with a lesser mana value and put that on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So, spicy thing about this is that, you know, if they're killing, if the opponent's killing one of your four drops, then you can go search for any three drop that you want in your deck, uh, or, or two drop, or one drop, and you can kind of do a little bit of a toolboxy thing here, that you get the right card at the right time. Something you'll be a little bit wary about if your opponent is playing with the bloom as well. Infuse of Vitality, again, another effect that we've seen uh, similar effects to before. Until end of turn, target creature gains death touch, and when this creature dies this turn, turn into the battlefield tapped under your control. So instant speed way of giving death touch, so you can make the 1-1 one, one be able to block uh, quite a big creature by itself, which is quite good, but also that if they've got a creature that they want to keep a hold of that you can try to remove, then it comes back to the battlefield tapped, and again to life, which can help them just survive that little bit of um, like a little bit of damage. So quite a few different things going on with that card there. We've got a big spicy mythic here. One black, 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 green, green, green. Exchange your hand in graveyard. Exile harness infinity. So this in the late game is going to be quite a big deck, and I think Weather Bloom does generally want to go to the late game. They've got a lot of life gain there, so they can basically just get their whole graveyard back to their hand. And this can do quite a lot of uh, shenanigans there. It's instant speed as well, so it can do it on your turn, and then they can come next turn and play a load of creatures just to 
uh, absolutely come up the board and, and do exactly what they want to do. So that is an important card to have there. Last one, Putrefy, Mystic Archive card at rare. Destroy target artifact or creature, it can't be regenerated. Nice removal, and black is kind of all about removal in this set, as we're going to see when we go into black. Moving on to the other side of Witherbloom, we've got the mono black card, starting with Lash of Malice, single black for quite an interesting spell. Target creature gets plus two, minus two, until end of turn. And this is quite a versatile card for a single black mana. It can be a pump spell, it can be a removal spell. Uh, it can do quite a lot of things, and it's quite difficult to play around, I think, because there's so many different ways it could be used to help win combat, or potentially even just pump one of your creatures to win the game. Also for a single black mana, I've got another interesting card, Professor's Warning, another modal spell. First of all, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, or target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. So a way to either put a little bit of pump on a creature, again, get that last little bit of damage, or to blank the removal spell, which is going to be quite important as well. You might want to play your removal into this uh, in first main phase, just in case they, they cast this uh, and make something be able to block after the removal as well. But sometimes you might want to cast it during, uh, or you might want to... Uh, wait until they try and cast it in combat to give that creature indestructible, then in response you could play your removal spell, depending on what you've got. Another interesting card, Plum the Forbidden, one in the black. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do, copy this spell for uh, each creature sacrificed this way. You draw a card and you lose one life. So, at first look, it might not look like this affected border anyway. However, it does affect things with Magecraft. So, if, I think it's with the Blue Apprentice, is the green-black Magecraft drain for one so you know they could have this they could sacrifice their whole board uh, and if they've got pests as well they're going to be negating that uh, life loss because they'll be gaining life from the pests another thing it does a uh, combo with the pump spell that was so earlier where you gain uh, where creature gets plus x plus x where x amount of life you've gained this turn so they've got a lot of pests uh, they attack through with everything you block a load of things in a bit of a board stall they get through with one or two pests but then they sacrifice everything else again a lot of life yes they lose life as well but they will gain some life and uh, pump one of their creatures for quite a bit using this. And they can even use it to dig for that pump spell, so uh, it's a nice little part of the combo there. We've also got Flunk, one and a black. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is seven minus the number of cards uh, that creature's controller has in hand. So if your opponent's got this, and you've got, say, three cards in hand, it's going to give something minus four, minus four. It's a reason to play, uh, to potentially hold uh, land cards in your hand if you're playing against a black deck. Of course, if you're Quandrix, you might want to get those lands out there, so it's going to depend on how you're playing and what your deck does. But it is a reason to hold on to some cards that you wouldn't necessarily normally play, or that you wouldn't maybe just play out the lands or something in a normal game. Because if you have cards in hand and the opponent's on black, this removal spell is going to be less effective than it would be otherwise. Moving on, we've got Umbral Duke, two and a black. Again, modal spell, choose one. Target player, sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, or create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. So uh, one way is just a flash 2-1 flyer, which uh, can be quite useful in, in combat, but also it can make the opponent sacrifice a creature. Again, modal spell, it, the flexibility on this is really, really good. And uh, I can see casting either side of this in different situations. Christian Disappointment, each player loses two life, you draw two cards. This can be used as just a, a straight burn spell. Uh, if you're on two life, then the opponent can just cast this. Instant speed as well. Often these effects are kind of a sorcery speed, uh, but they also manage to draw two cards. The way to play around this is to make sure your opponents are two life, because if they cast this and they're at two life, then they're going to lose as well. So th that is a little way you can play around it. And I know at one point I will be stuck with this card in my hand. Opponents are two life, I'm at two life. I suppose that would create a draw, wouldn't it? Hmm. It's a way to not lose. And then last one is Bill for Mastery. It's a rare card. Uh, you may pay one black rather than this spell's mana cost. If the one black cost was paid, an opponent draws a card. Exile, target creature or planeswalker. Uh, but it just costs three and a black overall. Exile, a creature or planeswalker is really powerful. For four mana, it's quite a good uh, rate already. But for two mana, it's going to be doable. But you can see here, there's some quite good removal spells in black. And as we move on to the Mystic Archive card as well, uh, you can see we've got a another few good removal spells here. But before we get the removal spells, Dark Ritual, add black, black, black. Uh, this is going to potentially close out some games quite early. It just might create the opponents to be able to get ahead really fast. But also I can see cases where it's a bit of a blank card because it does cost you a card to cast this. Uh, so it's going to be interesting and limited. Uh, it might be quite useful in a kind of Storm style deck. We do have Tendrils of Agony, but to get both this and Tendrils of Agony means you're going to have to be quite lucky. 
Also got Village Rites. This will cost a, to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. With pests, it's going to be really good. And also, just it's a way to kill another pest that the, the, might, the opponent might not have normally been able to kill. Uh, so that would gain them potential that life that's going to save them from uh, death. Removal spell next. Eliminate one in the black. Destroy target creature or planeswalk with mana value three or less. There's going to be loads of creatures with mana value three or less, especially with all the tokens knocking about. Uh, so each college has its own mascot token. And they'll all, all have uh, mana value three or less. If you're playing Quandrix especially, I think this is going to be important because you can get some big tokens uh, that are, are fractals, which this is going to be worried about. Also got Tainted Pact. Interesting spell. Uh, I know I've said that quite a lot this video, but uh, there's a lot of interesting spells in this. It's, it's kind of the, the point of the format. Um, it's a bit of a just a, a dig for a card. I don't know how playable it's going to be in limited. I haven't given it too much thought, but it doesn't affect the board, so it doesn't really worry us too much. It does potentially let them dig for a certain spell. And then we've also got Doomblade. Everything dies to Doomblade, apart from black creatures. And this is going to be a bit more interesting in a ghoul set, because there's going to be a lot of uh, hybrid mana or gold cards, which are black and another colour, so it might be a little bit worse than it would be in, say, a core set, where you have a lot more monocolour cards. Um, and also, if you're going to be playing in the arena ladder then you're going to not be playing any pod drafts so you're a lot more likely as a black deck to be coming up against other black decks so just bear that in mind when you're playing this this card it's still definitely playable but uh it's definitely the conditions on it in this set are going to be bigger than they are in other sets the other college that isn't with a bloom that black's included in is silver quill and again, got some good removal spells here. Starting with Vanishing Verse, White and the Black, Exile, Target, Monocolor Permanent. Just a reminder, if it's hybrid mana, it's not going to be Monocolor Permanent. And if it is a non-coloured permanent, so colourless, then it's not going to be Monocolored as well. Just a little bit on the rules on that one. Also got D-Spark, Exile, Target, Permanent, with mana value 4 or greater. And this is uh, another solid removal spell uh, from the Mystical Archive. Both of these are rare so far. A non-rare one, it's uncommon, Fracture, Destroy Target, Artifact, Enchantment, or Planeswalker. I'm not sure how playable this is going to be, actually. I don't know how many enchantment removal spells there are or anything like that, or problematic enchantments or artifacts are going to be around. Like I said, I've said a few times already, we're going to be focused more on instant sorceries, so this is going to be potentially a little bit less useful than it has been in the past. And then, closing statement, three white-black spells cost two less to cast during your end step, so it's a nice or weird uh, kind of... Cost reduction effect there. Destroy target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Put a plus one plus one counter up to one target creature you control. So, again, something to watch out for when the opponents gain priority. Um, you know, do they have an opportunity to cast on their end step of three mana when they only have three mana open? Could be just giving the game away that they might have this in hand. But either way, it's a solid, solid spell, even for five mana. Moving on to white, uh, we've got a few cards to start with here. Show sure, confidence of a one and a white. When you cast a spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So it's a little bit like stone, but not quite. And again, it's going to be triggering magecraft quite a lot. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It gains vigilance until end of turn. So it's a way to get the copies in. Pumps creatures. If you uh, in uh, there's a couple of white cards, uh, white creatures with magecraft, and they get bigger. So I think this is going to be quite a good card in those, actually. If you manage to cast another spell before casting this, I think that's going to be quite good. We've also got Study Break, one and a white, tap up to two target creatures and learn. So, uh, you know, instant speed way to tap a couple of creatures down the opponent's side. And then you do get to learn, so you get to pick out a card from your sideboard. It's a lesson card, fair enough, but that's going to be the, the correct card for that opportunity. Possibly a little bit better than drawing a card, especially if you've got a, a decent selection of learned cards to choose from. Beam Defense, another one and a white card, so there's lots of this uh, mana cost. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains hexproof until end of turn. Another way to blank removal. There's a lot of instant sorcery removal around, as I've already seen, but there's also a lot of ways to blank that between this and Snakeskin Veil and other things that we've seen as well. Expel, great removal spell. I think it's uh, better than versions of this we've seen in the past because it's instant speed. Exile, target, tap creature means you can uh, do it while the creature's attacking, or you can do it after it's attacking and it's still tapped down. Uh, I think it's it's a really solid card, great to have a common, and you'll be seeing a lot of this card when, you, when you're attacking and, and things like that. Also got two cards at four mana. Uh, one's a common, one's a rare. The rare is Semester's End. A lot of words on this one. Exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers you control at the beginning of the uh, next end step. Return each of them to the battlefield under its owner's control. Each of them enters a battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature and an additional loyal counter if it's a planeswalker. So something to be wary about uh, that the opponent could uh, block all your stuff, 
cast this, exile their stuff, it comes back to the end step, um, and then they're going to attack through with a lot of buffed creatures. Uh, so, you know, if you do an alpha strike, then the opponent can do this, and, and then it can absolutely ruin your day. It doesn't really work very well with, um, with tokens, because the tokens would cease to exist, so there are a lot of tokens around in this format, so that, that is a, a benefit if your opponent does have this, but I think it's a really, really powerful card, and, you know, it can do quite a lot of stuff in combat, and then crack back with quite a lot more damage next turn. The last one we've got, Defend the Campus, another modal spell. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn, or destroy a target creature with power four or greater. So two really uh, useful uh, modes on this that I can see cast on either one in certain opportunities, especially in a white deck, which might have a lot of uh, the black-white inkling tokens if you're in Silver Quill or something like that. White has a few instant speed uh, Mystical Archive cards, start with Swords of Plowshares, a really, really solid removal spell. Exile target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. Usually used to remove one of the opponent's creatures, so if you've got this, you remove the opponent's creatures. If the opponent's got this, it'll remove your creature. But if you're attacking into stuff, they could use this just to gain the life so they can survive combat that they wouldn't normally be able to. So say you're about to destroy their six power creature, then they can get, uh, cast this, exile that creature instead, and they gain six life. And it might be the, the difference between winning and losing. Malatai, we've already seen. Solid removal, uh, it's a solid counter spell rather, not a removal spell, uh, that will be catching people out. God's Willen, I think God's Willen is another one of these cards which in a gold set is going to be that a little bit more important. And because with all the hybrid colored uh, cards around, that if you make something unblockable, then it can attack potentially through the opponent's whole board, even if they've got a, a number of different colors out there. Because a green and black creature is still green or black, and you can uh, use God's Willen to give it that little more, bit more protection. Same with removal spells, so if, if you try and remove something with a, a green-black removal spell, then in cast God's Will and they're going to name green or black, doesn't matter which one, and they'll be able to make it unblockable to those creatures as well. So uh, quite an important point there. Ephemerate, card I really love. I can't wait to play this in Quandrix and uh, start bouncing all the biomathematicians and making a load of um, fractals. I think that's going to be really good. Um, but this is quite a good card if you try to remove that creature that can bounce it and then it can bounce it again and if you've got an ATB ability it's going to be doing absolutely disgusting things. Find Strike, Uncommon Mystical Archive, target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn, draw a card for a single white. Uh, good, good with Magecraft I think, uh, good just to uh, pump a creature, draws a card as well, single white mana, it's really really powerful, you know there's five single white mana cards here so there's a lot of opportunities for single white cards, there was a couple in, in the previous slide as well. Revitalize, one and a white, uh, you gain three life, draw a card, and then the last one, Teferi's Protection, quite a big one. Uh, it is a mythic, so th there is that for it, but until end of turn, your life total can't change, and you gain protection from everything. Uh, all permanents you control phase out. So, the fade phase out. This does mean the tokens can, can come back, so a token phases out, does phase back in. They don't enter the battlefield again, but you can't do anything to them, and if you... Alpha swing your opponent, they've got this, they phase everything out, then phase everything back in, then attack through. And, uh, you know, that, that again is going to ruin your day. So there's a lot of cards in the set to worry about uh, when you're doing, thinking about doing alpha swing. Uh, sometimes you're just going to have to hope for the best and hope they don't have something. A lot of these effects are at rare, but uh, there, there are a lot of, of, of ways that the opponent can survive a big swing like that. Looking at lower hold, and uh, first of all, got make your mark. Red white hybrid, target which is plus one plus oh until end of turn. When that creature dies, this turn create a 3 2 red and white spirit creature token. And interesting card, you can use it to pump, uh, or the opponent could use it to pump their creature, so it's going to trade profitably with your creature, where you might be attacking your 3 3 into their 2 2. They make their 2 2 into 3 2, so they trade, and then they get a, just a normal 3 2 back on the other side of the field. And that's going to be a really, really good value boost for the opponent. Right, and Helix, rare at the Mystical Archive, uh, deals 3 damage to any target, you gain 3 life. Really, really good removal spell that uh, used to see play a lot, still does see play in modern things like that from time to time. Uh, the life gain is not insignificant, attached to already quite a good rate, three damage on a uh, two mana spell. We have the only one of these I think which really exists as an instant in the backside of a creature spell. Rather than silence, uh, white, white, it's on the back of Flame School Celebrant. Your opponents can't cast spells or activate Planeswalker's loyal abilities this turn, exile rather than silence. And it is a little bit like a counter spell. It's not something that I would be too worried about, but it does exist when you're uh, casting these things. And if you maybe in playing uh, uh, best of three, if you've seen Flame of Skull Scroll Celebrant, you might know about Revel and Silence in their hand as well. The last one, Low Hold Command, choose two, create a three to red and white spe uh, spirit creature token. 
Creatures to control get plus one plus oh and gain indestructible at the end of turn. Deals three damage to any target. Target player gains three life. Sacrifice permanent, then draw two cards. So again, these commands have a lot of versatility in them. You're choosing two of these four quite different effects. Uh, and it's going to be just difficult to play around. That said, if your opponent's got five mana open, you really don't know what to play around anyway. But it does have to be in the low hold or Boros colours. The last of the single colours, we've got red today. First of all, Academic Dispute. Target creature blocks this turn if able. You may have it gain reach until end of turn. Learn. And quite a versatile card actually here. So you could cast it on the opponent's creature to make it block, which is probably the first for thought that comes to head. Or you can cast it on your own creature and give it reach. And then it can block the flyer, which is quite important. And then learn as well, let it pull something from the sideboard. So, you know, it's quite a big one to play around and not an effect we usually see in red, especially to give something of yours reach to help block. We have seen some, the traditional four drop with reach, and there's one in this set as well. But just be able to get your 2 2 reaches is, is, is quite unusual for red. So, I uh, want to watch out for definitely. Also, got sudden breakthrough, one in red. Target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains first strike until the end of turn. Create treasure token. So strong card. Uh, it's quite an important card, I think. First strike at instant speed is always going to be a problem. It's not sure strike, um, so that was, gets plus three plus zero and first strike until the end of turn. But plus two plus zero and first strike is is going to be quite good. Haven't seen a huge amount of stuff with death touch, but there are, there are a few things around, so there is that to think about. Uh, then we've got first day class common. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one plus one on it, and it gains haste until end of turn. And it's got learn. Don't know how good this is going to be. Uh, one in the red. Uh, you get a creature. I suppose you can get some token makers. I'm not convinced by this card. Um, being instant speed doesn't really matter. It's going to not really affect things too much. The only thing I'm thinking of is just to basically learn and grab a lesson from the sideboard at instant speed. Um, getting creatures that enter on the opponent's turn is, is quite unusual. So, weird card. Uh, I could be totally wrong about it. Let us know in the comments if you think I'm wrong, but uh, there we are. Also, if you made it this far, I'm doing it right before the end. Uh, well, we've still a couple uh, sets of cards away from the end, but uh, of course I would appreciate the subscribe to the channel. Uh, I am really trying to get to the 100 uh, subscribers that's a big target of mine i've been edging closer there over the last couple of months but uh still quite a way away so i would really appreciate it and if you could share this to your friends as well or your play groups uh then you know yes you're going to be giving them a little bit of an edge but uh, I'm, I'm, i would really really appreciate it anyway back to the video at hand heat of debate two in red this spell can't be counted deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker three mana four damage removal spell can't be counted which is quite key i think that we've already seen there's quite a lot of, of uh, counter spells uh really solid card at common Three mana, four damage is a really good rate. Then we've got Enthusiastic Study. Target plus three, plus one against Trampolin until end of turn. We've already discussed how Trampolin's going to be quite uh, important in this set. And that still remains true now. It's also got Learn. Uh, like I said before, you can't learn off the back of... Uh, or you can, you can learn, but you, you, there's no instant speed uh, lesson card. So you can't do this and instant speed into a, uh, into a lesson. But it's still going to be quite a useful card. And then finally, Explosive Welcome. Rare. Oh, no, it's uncommon. Seven and a red. It deals five damage to any target and three damage to any other target. Add red, red, red. Eight mana. I suppose eight mana. Deal five damage to an opponent, three damage to a creature, or the other way around. Uh, it should win the game whenever this is cast, but it is eight mana. Uh, you also add red, 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 so you can cast another spell afterwards. But I think at this point, you're probably going to be pretty empty handed. Uh, so I'd. Don't expect to see a huge amount of this, but uh, it will get played from time to time. Red's Mystical Archive has some really uh, iconic cards in. We've got Shock, which we've all seen before. Two damage to any target for a red, but next to it we've also got Lightning Bolt. It's Bigger Brother. Three damage, so it's a three damage Shock. Uh, don't see this very often limited. Solid removal spell, solid burn spell. Three damage to face if need be. Uh, decent in, in limited, but it's not game-breaking by any means, although it would be game-breaking a little bit in uh, standing, historic, and pioneer. Also got Infuriate, single red mana again, target creature gets plus three, plus two until end of turn. Uh, increase in Vengeance, copy target instant or sorcery spell you, you control. Uh, you may choose new targets for, uh, for new copies, and if you cast it for the flashback, you get a copy of twice. Uh, so having this with something like a Shock or a Lightning Bolt or another removal spell could be quite key. And also those copies are going to uh, trigger Magecraft, so you, know, you could cast this, you could cast your Shock, and then you can cast... a. Uh, Shock, shock copy and you get three Magecraft triggers so uh, Magecraft's going to be a really interesting way that these copies are going to be affecting things and it's nice to see that although this one's in the Mystic Archive they have put a couple of ways to copy spells in the non-Mystic Archive as well Thrill of Possibility uh, discard a card draw two cards for one in a red 
yeah, okay, it's good. It's a good way to, to kind of cycle through your deck if you've got deadlines later in the game. Uh, they could the opponent could cast this and then get into some kind of removal spell, which they weren't indicating that they had previously. Chaos Warp, another interesting removal spell. Target, uh, the owner of target permanent shuffles uh, it into the library and then reveals top card of the library. If it's a permanent card, they put it on the battlefield. Uh, you know, you can potentially get rid of your quite big uh, permanent, which is a problem in red, which you don't always get to do. So it's a, it's unusual one. It is at Mythic. It's not the strongest of cards out there, but it does do the removal spell uh, thing. And it's a, it's just a fun card to play with, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased it's in here in the Mystic Archive. Uh, and then the last one we've got is Urza's Rage, 2 in a red, kick out for 8 in a red, so that would be a total of 12 mana, I think, if my maths is uh, going correctly. Can't be counted, deals 3 damage to any target if it was kicked, so it deals 10 damage to any uh, to that permanent or player, and the damage can't be prevented. Um, so, you know, 12, 12 mana to do uh, 10 damage is quite a lot, Uh don't really expect to see that happen a lot, but Prismari does have a few ways to create treasures and, uh, you know, maybe get these bigger spells out, so it is possible, I suppose. And the last college, we've got Prismari. Teach by example, uh, two hybrid mana of red, blue, red, blue. When you cast your next instant of sports three spell this turn, copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. We'll just look at a couple of effects that are like this. The copies are going to be triggered in Magecraft as well, as well as this triggered in Magecraft, so uh, I think that's... Quite a cool effect to have, and uh, I can see why it's been put at common. Also has got Electrolyze at rare. Uh, deals two damage to fight as you choose among one or two targets, draw a card. Uh, solid spell. Not going to be game breaking. You'd normally expect to see this as kind of the uncommon slot, probably. Uh, but because it's in the Mystic Archive and it's not in the standard, it's been put at rare. Prismari Command. Uh, the command for the Prismari College. One, blue, red. So it's quite cheap one this time. Choose two. Deals two damage to any target. Target player draws two cards and discards two cards. Target player creates a treasure token, destroy target artifact. So again, quite a few uh, varied ways it can be used here. It's not as big or splashy as some of the others, but you know the flexibility is what makes it really good here. Practical research, draw four cards and discard two cards unless you discard an instant or sorcery spell. Not affecting the board, but it could be drawn into something, but for five mana, it's unlikely going to be drawn into something that it can uh, cast. And we've got two big spells to finish off here. First of all, creative outburst, three blue, blue, red, red, so seven mana total. Uh, deals five damage to any target. Look at the top five cards in your library. Put one limit in your hand. The rest in the bottom of your library in any order. The main thing to worry about here is it's a seven mana removal spell. Uh, it's not really going to be affecting any big combats uh, too much, but it is something to be aware of. The last one, Magma Opus. Really cool card name here. Deals four damage. To, uh, it is eight mana, by the way, before I go into this, but it is instant speed. Four damage to fight as you choose amount, any number of targets. So probably four damage to one big thing, but you never know. Tap two target permanence. Create a 4-4 four, four blue and red uh, elemental token and draw two cards. So it does a whole lot of stuff. You, both these last two cards have uh, blue, red, blue, red. Discard the card and create a treasure token. No, that isn't a cast. That's an ability of the card. So you can't counter that effect um, if you are looking at that. So just a little bit to worry about, to think about there. And that is it for this set. It's looking really fun. I'm looking forward to playing it. Hopefully getting in on the streamer event. I'll be streaming at the Past Left Drafts streaming account. I'll put a link to that in the description. Also a link to Twitter. I'll be putting down there as well. We, we uh, don't have a huge following on Twitter, but we're slowly getting there as well. But like I say, the biggest thing you can do at the minute is to subscribe and share the videos amongst your friends because I do want to get my viewer base up there. If you've enjoyed it and you've viewed it the whole time love to hear comments what do you think about the instant sorceries there's been absolutely loads this video was quite difficult to put together actually because there's a huge selection of cards that are around and you know I, I just love to hear what you think about the videos in general thanks again for watching and i hope to see you again in a draft very soon